It's a chilly morning where I am, but I thank God for a new day. What do you do when adversity strikes? Now, if you have ever looked at me closely or you have ever had an area of view of me, you would have discovered that I have a big scar right here. Now, that scar has a story and has been there since I was six or seven years old. You see, one day, my dad brought some farm implements, jebes to be precise, uh, to be uh, used on the farm. And so they started preparing them one morning. So what they did was to sharpen them, and then they applied some paint, I think, to stop rusting. Then they hung them on a roof, not a very high roof, but I was not expecting to reach the roof. And everybody was off to work. So when everybody was off, I thought, these are good toys. So I went and took a pole and hit one of them to get it down. When I saw it coming, I froze on the point, and it alerted right here. Now, the only thing I remember is uh, the blood and then waking up in hospital. You see, when adversity strikes, it's very possible to freeze right on the spot and be unable to respond. Now, the Bible reminds us that we are like a tree planted by the sides of the water, that even in the times of drought, we continue bearing fruit and we continue growing. We have a very good example of that in Isaac. And we see that in the book of Genesis chapter 26. And the Bible says there was drought, there was famine, and the Lord gave instructions of how Isaac was to handle it. Number one, in drought, we learn from this text, stay on the side of God. Adversity must not determine the course of your life. Verse one, now there was a famine in the land. The Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. This place was so bad, the place where God is telling him to stay, so foul that Isaac was forced to lie about his wife, saying, this is my sister, because he was afraid for her life and his life. But God said, stay here for a while, and he obeyed. Stay on God's side. Don't go down to Egypt. Number two, keep sowing. Do not waste the seed in your hand. You know, Isaac, the Bible says in verse 12, planted seed in that same place and in a year reaped a hundredfold. There is seed in your hands for this season. The time in your hands is seed, the gifts, the dreams in this season. Keep sowing. And number three, reopen the old wells and cover what the enemy has clogged up. Isaac reopened the wells, verse 19, that had been dug at the time of his father Abraham, which had been filled up by the enemy, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. They are ancient wells that you need to redig again. The ancient wells of forgiveness that will rebuild your relationship. The ancient wells of courage. The ancient wells of love, of prayer, of sacrificial sacrifice. Keep opening up new wells. But then number four, keep digging new wells. Reopen the old wells, but keep opening new wells. Do not be stopped. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered fresh water, but the herders disputed with him. They dug another well, but they also quarreled about that. He moved on from there and dug another well, and nobody quarreled over that. He named it Rehoboth, saying, now the Lord has given us room. Keep discovering new things, new ways of doing things. Keep growing. Do not allow adversity to destroy your life. So number one, stay on the side of God, and that is the most important thing. And then keep sowing and keep reopening wells by the grace of God. Enjoy and be like a tree that is planted by the signs of the water. God bless you and keep growing. Amen.